So for a little introduction to Bradford, if we can possibly somehow re, uh, recapture his uh, career in just a couple of words, um, Bradford uh, is a voice that's been heard by millions, uh, whether it's narrations or commercials. Uh, you've likely heard of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, yes, he is the voice for the Doctor Strange audiobooks there. Uh, he has also worked with major brands such as Mountain Dew most recently, uh, Publix, MasterCard, uh, Labatt's Brewing Company, Purex, the WWE, and the list goes on. But uh, we will cut it there for now. Bradford has over 20 years experience. Sorry, Bradford to mention, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Bradford <laughs> focuses, on, focuses on his authenticity, his conversational reads, and uh, really tries to connect with who that talent really is and bring out the best of them. Uh, he's also professionally trained uh, and accredited sound engineer. Uh, so he knows a thing or two about audio, which we're going to be speaking on today. So thank you very much. I hope everyone here can give Bradford a warm welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us, Bradford. My pleasure. That was <laughs> weird and fun at the same time. I want to lay a couple of ground rules today before we get started. Um, number one, keep it simple. Number two, there's no panacea. There's no plug-in that's going to fix it all. And number three, uh, you're going to have to do some of the heavy lifting as students. So what do I mean by keep it simple? N new voice actors generally have this idea that complex is professional. More plugins, more plugins. Make my chain as complex as possible. That's going to help. No, it will not. That will that that is simplicity shows the master when it comes to audio. The I have a belief that there are six pieces of of gear that you need, and that's it. Your gain, your filter, your gate, your compressor, uh, and your limiter and an EQ. Sorry, EQ and then a limiter, um, and that's it. And if you can use those things, you don't need any of the other gear. Um, so, you know, really, really, really take this with you. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, simple. And going along with that, when I say there's no panacea, there's no plugin that's going to fix everything. They try and sell you those things all the time uh, that this is going to fix everything. No, it's not. And for the most part, it's probably going to create more problems. So, you know, be careful with that. And as far as doing some of the heavy lifting, there are no right answers, right? If I, if I, if I show you a, a plugin, I'm going to show you some stuff today, right? I want you to realize, I want you to soak in how the plugin works, soak up what it does, but don't focus so much on necessarily the settings I'm using or those sorts of things, because those are mine, right? They're going to work for me. You, your job is to sort of take what I'm going to give you as far as how it works, what it does, and apply it to yourself. Um, if I bump, if I boost 125 hertz, that's because that's what sounds good in this room, right? Or that's what sounds good to me. It may work for you, but it may not. Don't take it as I'm saying that's what you have to do. I'm simply going to be saying this is how I, this is my best practice. So, you know, it, as you go out of here with some of this information, you know, take it with you and play with it. This is a craft. It's an art. Have fun. Um, so let's jump in, right? Good. Um, number one, the most underrated piece of gear in your chain. Uh, it's not sexy. It, it doesn't have any cool blinking lights or bouncing meters. And it really only does one thing and one thing only. And that's your gain knob. Um, gain is arguably the most important piece of the signal chain. It's the foundation for everything. And people rarely talk about it. Most people don't even know how it does what it does or what it even does. And honestly, knowing how something works is far more important than knowing what it does because how something works will allow you to use it better and more efficiently. So for example, I'm going to ask a question you and Kyle, you can see the answers to these questions. And I'm just this question. What does gain do? What does your gain knob do? If you have an answer for it, write it down and put it in the chat and then tell me what people say, because I'm, I'm curious what their answers are. What does your gain knob do? All right. We have controls your input level. Um, increases the level of input. Uh, controls signal strength. Adjusts One person. the sensitivity of the mic to the That's sounds it. around it. That's it. It has nothing to do with volume or loudness. Um, the gain knob adds voltage, which makes your mic more sensitive. That's what it does. And loudness or volume is simply a byproduct of that situation. Now, I'm going to pull something up here. Look, 
I get paid a ton of money. So I put in a bunch of money and I hired like 30 people to put this together. So please appreciate that picture. That is, I mean, it's art. Is That's art right there. <laughs> so <clears throat> when we're talking about gain, right? And we're talking about voltage is what we're talking about. Here you got your front wall. Here you got your back wall. Everybody can see this, right, Kyle? I mean, yes. Yeah, we can know. see. I don't want them to, but so <laughs> here's your pretty purple head for some reason. You're about three, but anywhere between three and six inches off the mic. You know, again, however you want to do. You're in a less than perfect room because that's where most people live. When you're, when you turn on the microphone, right? It, 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 it has a pickup pattern similar to this, right? It's, it's picking up about what's in front of, what's immediately in front of that microphone. It's going to sound quiet, but again, remember, gain doesn't make it louder, it makes it more sensitive. Loudness is simply a byproduct of it. So, so as you turn up your gain knob, that sphere gets larger. And notice it gets taller, it also moves backwards. It's gonna pick up stuff off the back wall. It's gonna pick up what's coming out of your mouth immediately, but it's not necessarily gonna hear stuff off the back wall here right away, right? So then as you crank it up, right? It's going to get louder. Again, it's moving backwards towards the rear wall. It's also or towards the front wall. It's also moving towards the rear wall. And then if you do this right now, you've, you've gotten all of this volume that, that you're picking up. So you're now you're picking up more than you need. You're picking up all this extraneous noise out here. And remember, it's a cardioid pattern. So, it's, so this is an overhead shot, right? So as the heart gets bigger, yes, there's rear rejection, but it doesn't, it's not, all of this back here, it rejects and then it starts picking up all this stuff on the sides and in the back and then behind your head. So what's ideal for gain? Well, my ideal for gain, for, for using the gain knob, what I want it to hear is essentially this. I want, in my mind, what I'm listening for when I'm raising or lowering my gain is if I'm bringing my gain up as I'm talking, am I getting not just what's coming out of my mouth, because that is part of your sound, but also your chest, the, uh, the cavity of your head creates the, the sound of your voice. And so as I bring it up, if I start hearing extraneous noise from the floor, from the ceiling, from the front wall, from the back wall, right? Any of these things, if I start hearing those, I'm going to dial back my gain. And why is this important? Because anything that you do down the line, the compressor, the EQ, all that stuff, whatever you do to your gain, you're going, those things are going to have to deal with it. So if the ear of the microphone can't hear the back wall, then you don't have to worry about it being in your, in your path, in your, in your signal. If, if it's not hearing these things, then you don't have to worry about overworking your gate or worrying about, you know, your, your, your compressor and EQ needing to work extra hard or, or whatever. Once the gain is set properly, you know, or to, to, a, to, a, to a good level, then everything else can kind of sort of do its job properly. So this is why I believe it's the most important, but, and, and also very little talked about because it's not glorious. I mean, that's really it. It's not, I don't, I don't have a huge presentation on gain. What you want to think about is when it starts, when you start hearing the walls, or when you start hearing the external sounds, right? That should tell you that your gain, that the, that the mic is too sensitive and that you need to bring back the gain on it. So uh, let me just wrap it up by simply stating, right? When you're setting your gain up, um, you know, go for, if you were to think about it symbolically, picking up just behind your head or just to the back of your head, right? That volume, if you start hearing the walls, bring it back in. Know that later on, right? you can you can bring up the volume if you want to so i can set this a little bit quieter than than maybe i want it right because i know that once i kick this in right this compressor is is designed to it's not designed to but the way that i use it is to push it a little bit pardon me push it a little bit into the compressor and then move some output as well and then there's also gain on this which is just an eq but again by design actually it raises, it raises it because it's modeled after an API EQ that had a power amp in it. And so, you know, there's always, there's always uh, places to add 
after after your your gain knob, but your gain knob is really really important to set that tempo, if you will, to set the to set how everything is going to be seen from that moment on. And then when you get into your EQs, don't be afraid to use multiple EQs for very specific reasons, right? That first one is your filter. You're just, you're going, all right, great. I'm going to set that. And that's, that does its job. That's all that it's there to do is to make sure that that way, if you ever have a question, you can, you can turn it off. You can turn it on. You can go and you can attack it. This second one is going to attack that mid range that you heard. So you know that if it's if it's mid rangey or if it's part of that problem, you might need to address it here. And let's say you have this second EQ and it's to address sort of the dullness. So you decided to add some brightness. Well, okay, and you added brightness, you added this high end and you come in later and you go, you know, you come in the next day and you hear it and you're like, oh, it just sounds, wow, it sounds really, really bright. Maybe you turn this off and you go, Oh, that sounds great, but there's still that issue. Well, maybe it's not the brightness. Maybe what I need to do is maybe bring in some low end instead of adding brightness. Maybe what I need to do is balance, or sorry, is, is take out some low end, I apologize, but find that balance in a different way. So if I'm adding here and it's not working, maybe subtracting over there will work. I hope that helps. Bradford, what's the best the way for them? Coaching to at HastingsVO.com. Coaching at HastingsVO.com uh, for anybody that doesn't have their uh, answer or their question answered uh, here today, please feel free to reach out there. Um, but I am going to hop in and uh, I can grab a couple here. What yeah. uh, DAW system <laughs> do you recommend? What, what do you work out of? What are, so, let's give us two that uh, you highly right. recommend. Sure. What do I recommend? Anything but audacity. Mm -hmm. um, and, but so what do I recommend for people with Macs? I mean, garage band is perfectly fine it just needs you need a gate um its gate isn't really great so you might need to just but buy a channel strip anyway um i like adobe audition um i think reaper is really really good pro tools logic those are all great um again anything but audacity and the reason i don't like audacity is because of the way it handles audio it, it, the way that it handles your plugins, the way that I was just showing you my plugins are all stacked up and I can move them in and out of order without really, you know, and I can turn them on and turn them off live without, without affecting my audio. That's why, that's why I like it better for, for when you're trying to do stuff with audio. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, so we do have a question here for Don. Um, you mentioned setting it at 80 for low. Uh, yeah, and he was told 70 because at higher settings, you can make your voice sound too clinical and can lose some of the charm. Okay, charm. I don't know what that means. Um, in, in my case, the tenor baritone voice, other teachers have told me to set it. Yeah, as I said, there are no specific numbers. I'm not saying that for you, it, it is 80 or 70 or it could be 50 or 60. I don't know. Um, it could be it could be 90, could be 100. Um, but be careful as you get further up there, you're going to lose that low end support that that every voice, male or female, needs. Um, as far as losing character, I don't think character is necessarily something that uh, a, a high pass filter is going to going to do going to necessarily affect. Character is more timbre; it's more how you use your voice than anything. Um, it, it, again, when I said at the beginning, right? Don't focus on my settings; focus on what I'm telling you. It does. We're just trying when I, when we're using that high pass filter, we're just trying to get those subsonic frequencies out, those low air conditioners, the the refrigerator next door that's rumbling your floors. That's what we're trying to get out. Those frequencies we don't need. So that that's why you know again, it's not necessarily specific to the the number. It's more of just knowing how how why I'm doing what I'm doing uh, is I think far better. Awesome. Is there a difference um, between the analog and digital meters on a computer? Yes. There we go. Oh. That was the next one. <laughs> um, so uh, the other one, uh, I see Don here. Um, what's your take on hard limiting to stay in a certain dB? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I use a hard limiter uh, for everything but client stuff. Um, and that's because I, I have a general setting, which is what you're, I think you're hearing now, um, that I use for pretty much everything. Um, and, you know, if I get too crazy and too loud, it's not going to, it's not going to overdrive, but it may get a little, may get a little out there. So I'll put a hard limiter, not a hard limiter, but I'll, yeah, I'll put a brick wall limiter, um, on my, on my output channel and I'll set it to minus three. Again, my number, you could set yours to minus two, minus one. You could set it to minus five. I don't care, but I set mine to minus three and that way it just keeps me in check. But I can also crank up the overall volume if I'm doing audiobooks because they ask for very specific things. Right. And I'm, I might be working a little bit quieter. So the average volume is going to be too quiet, but my peak volume is fine. Well, that's what a limiter helps you do is it raises your average volume while keeping your peak where it needs to be. So yeah, I will use a limiter 
um, at, at, at the end of my chain, but it's simply there to be the, the babysitter when I get out of line, which isn't a lot, but yeah. So. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, I'll do the last question here with Andrea. Um, what, uh, and likely probably going to be some general advice. So um, what you, you want to watch out for Andrea in a small room, I can see these questions. Um, <laughs> what you want to watch out for in a small room is the buildup of low mid frequencies. Um, you know, those boxy frequencies, these sounds, because when you're in a room, right, it's not just the microphone or it's not just the microphone's not just picking up your voice. It's picking up the resonance of the ceiling, the floor, the walls, back and front, side to side. So, you know, if your room is small, there And there are mathematical equations that you can use to figure out what frequencies are going to be uh, offensive. But the reality for me is if you're in a closet or you're in a small room, just fill it up with soft stuff, right? And the denser the soft stuff, you're the, the, the variation of density of the soft stuff, the better. Foam isn't going to do much. It's only going to affect you know, high frequencies. It's not going to affect those low mids. Those require you know, larger pillows and like, or, or stacks and stacks of clothes, right? So again, you're, you're creating density with, with more clothes. So that's why closets are great. Fill them up with clothes, um, grab some moving blankets and attach them to the ceiling. People always forget about the ceiling. Um, and just, you know, they've got grommets, just jik, jik, put them in the corners. You know, if you rent the place, who cares? Nobody's going to take your deposit because you put holes in the ceiling of a closet. Um, but fill it up with soft stuff. Um, and closets are great because they already have clothes all in it. You can take your mic and put it between, you know, your clothes and just do that. Um, but what you want to watch out for are those low mid frequencies. Um, and, but again, you don't want to, you don't want to take them out too much because you'll lose that support. So what you may want to do is just dip them a little bit, but also make sure to kind of lift the things around it. So if let's say you find that that frequency is around 250 right? Well, drop 250, but don't forget to maybe raise 100 and maybe bring up, you know, I don't know, 1K, right? Somewhere around in there. Um, these are just numbers. They're abstract. I'm not saying those are the numbers you have to use. Um, again, do, you know, do find out for yourself. But um, yeah, in smaller rooms, that's what you generally, that's what I generally found I had to worry about were those low mid frequencies um, and coming off of those, those walls. Definitely. And as you guys can tell here, uh, Bradford is not only a wealth of knowledge around audio, but he's very passionate about it. If you guys are <laughs> looking for help on it, he did shout out uh, coaching at uh, coaching at HastingsVO.com. Um, reach out to him there. Um, he'd be more than happy to chat with you. <laughs> and uh, and you can certainly uh, extend some of his advice and passion around audio in your direction and hopefully help you get uh, either your first gig or your next gig. So uh, with that, that does bring us to the end of today's session. I want to say thank you very much, Bradford. Uh, this is not the first we have done together and I'm hoping it won't be the last. Uh, again, you're a wealth of knowledge. So thank you very much for carving <laughs> out the time and doing Thanks. this uh, for us today. So. Voices.